Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, Nancy, I'm in as Nelly for a change. Uh, this is uh, Nelly Deutsch, and you can see uh, Nancy Zingrone uh, right there. This is our second day of the Spring Blog Festival, the first of its kind, and we're really excited. Uh, we just had a session with Shelley Terrell and uh, three authors who blog. And now we're going to uh, go on to uh, talk about why Nancy uh, and how Nancy uh, connects through blogging. And I'm really excited about it. Nancy and I have been um, friends and colleagues for a number of years. Uh, time passes and we also met. We met online and then we met face to face and uh, it's really uh, a learning experience for me because um, I learned so much from Nancy. So I'm going to stop talking and let my dear friend uh, do the talking so I can learn. I don't talk when I, I don't learn when I talk as I tell my students. So thank you, Nancy, for joining us. Thank you, everyone. If you could just add in the chat box where you're from and feel free to also share uh, the link with your colleagues in case they haven't woken up yet. There's the link to share on Twitter and your other social networks. So I'm muting my mic and thank you, Nancy. Good morning. Can everybody hear me? Put a yes in the um, box if so. Oh, good, wonderful. Um, this is my virtual coffee cup, Tom. It's uh, yesterday Nellie was showing one with a heart and I was thinking about how I could leap into that conversation and show you my my Valentine's Day um, coffee cup from years ago. Um, anyway, I'm delighted to be here. I, I was in a few of the sessions yesterday and hoping to watch the ones I missed on recordings uh, this week coming and I'll be around today and tomorrow as well. Um, and, and part of, of, of what I'm doing is responding to um, things that people have been saying. But also, I have a, um, it's probably not a unique perspective, but I've done an awful lot of, um, I've spent an awful lot of time on, uh, vi with video blogging in terms of, of being a consumer and thinking about what it means to do that. So you'll see that, that impact here. Let me go to the first slide. So today what we're going to talk about is, um, is my journey really. I mean we're all talking from our own experience. Um, oh I'm sorry Guadalupe, uh, if sometimes if you go out and come back in your, you get your sound back. Oh she can't hear me. I do, <laughs> I do this all the time. Um, thanks Tom for putting it verbally. Um, so for me, the journey has been about connection. I really resonate with the whole notion of connectivity on a personal level, a local level, and a global level, global level as um, especially. So blogging for me has been connecting to friends and family, connecting to colleagues and mentors, both new and old. In my original description, I was talking about um, uh, customers and students, um, but I wanted to focus more in on, on uh, mentors and colleagues today. And then under this connection to colleagues and mentors, there are a couple of areas. One is that you're getting to know the ropes. How, how am I going to do this? How am I going to use um, blogging? How do I interact with other people who are blogging? What does it mean to me? And then blogging, vlogging, whatever we're doing in terms of sharing can happen anywhere. And that's um, something that I think about because I'm on a lot of different social media sites. And uh, um, one of the most important things I think when you're putting yourself out there is being authentic and being true to the kinds of things that you're interested in and that you believe in. And also, utilizing the experience to help um, bring yourself uh, into a position of knowing more about what it is that you're trying to learn. So it's a, it's a personal journey, it's an intellectual journey, it's an emotional journey, um, and it can be a professional journey and so on. And then um, connecting to yourself. I find that I've, I, I've always been a journaler, I've always been a diarist, um, 
I, I uh, started writing little books in crayon and sewing them together when I was seven or eight years old and started a, a diary with a lock that I hid from my little brother um, at 11, I guess, and then started um, being a little bit more serious about what I put into the text that I was leaving for myself um, uh, when I was 13. So I've always done this kind of thing. And yesterday in one of the lectures, Nelly was asking people, when was the first blogger? And I found a, a, I really don't like Wikipedia. I don't use it if I can possibly avoid it. And I found um, a university uh, website that talked about blogging as being really the continuation of um, writing a diary, being a diarist, um, and just on a different medium. And they marked the first quote-unquote blogger, so a, a short piece uh, writer who wrote about their own life, back to 966, which I thought was quite interesting. And that that was put together, exactly, Nellie, that was put together um, as a book in, uh, in 1006. So 40 years after this woman started to write these um, kind of short pieces about herself, it was put together in a book. So for that writer, a blog is basically a diary with another kind of technology. And it's a diary that's written in, in different ways. When I was in high school, for instance, I did the column for our, local, our uh, high school newsletter, newspaper. I think junior and senior year. And col writing a column is very much um, a precursor of blogging as well. So we're just sharing. And take, you can take the just out because sharing is, such, um, sharing is such an important part of who we are as human beings. We're so social. So before I get into um, the blogs I'm going to talk about, I wanted to say a little bit about myself. Um, I'm uh, in my 60s, and my husband and I have been a, um, a couple for over 30 years. And one of our disappointments has been exactly Nelly, Nelly sharing but not forcing. That's one of the key things is always authenticity and earnestness, essentially, being willing to share something with an open heart. So back to me. Um, I've, you know, I've got degrees and all that stuff, but um, yes, we are, Nellie. But one of the things I wanted to say was that my husband and I had uh, were have been disappointed in life in this, in one way and probably the only way is that we were never able to have children of our own. Um, and when I sat down to make this slide uh, to say this about my life, because I'm. Um, um, I don't know if that's one of the reasons why connection is so important to me, but anyhow, I put together this a slide of our nieces and nephews and our great niece, and um, it actually made me feel a whole lot better about not having kids of my own because the family is full of a wonderful next generation, and they're all different and they all have different um, agendas and. Um, interests and goals in life and um, uh, wonderful significant others and futures that they're planning and living and all that stuff. So it's a, it's a, um, it's a huge blessing. Now I pulled out the pointer because you see this little picture in here. This is my, uh, uh, my husband's nieces and my nieces. But they're from his side of the family. And there are three young women who live in Dallas. And I'm going to talk about two of the blogs that were written by, two blogs, one written by this young lady, Ashley Alvarado, and the other one by Megan Alvarado, when I'm talking about connecting with family. The rest of these folks I keep in touch with through Facebook. And it's really true that Facebook is a kind of a blog medium. Um, in fact, I think all social media, where you put something of yourself out there in an in an authentic way, um, can be called blogging, microblogging, whatever. It's a way of sharing. Um, and I keep in touch with all of these folks in their lives and their loves and their aspirations through Facebook. But having a family member who blogs is, is an enormous gift in terms of connectivity. And as a teacher, it gives you an insight into a generation to 
that you are coming into contact with when you're in the classroom, whether it's face-to-face -face or online. I have taught on and off all my life. Um, never had a long-term teaching job. Right now I'm a part-time um, adult education teacher at a local research center, and I'm also an adjunct faculty at North Central University teaching psychology. Um, and then mostly what I've been doing is is uh, research and writing. Um, so I'm very interested in what the people who are college age uh, are and young adults are thinking and how they're feeling the world and how they're taking in the world and relating that back to who I was when I was their age and also relating it kind of forward to what are the shifting ways that people interact with the, with the world. So m these two young nieces of mine who are really wonderful people, all my nieces and nephews of course are wonderful people, um, uh, has written, has started a blog called, um, that she just calls Ashley A. Alvarado and the, the website is at the end. I have a um, uh, I have a slide at the end that gives you the links to everything that I'm talking about, including Ashley and Megan's blogs. Her blog, Ashley's blog, is very elegant and very eloquent and very much in the old-time tradition of diary writing. Um, it's very personal. It's um, all text. It's, uh, she talks about elements in her life, about her own life, about things that she's reading, about what writing these... Um, these daily kind of reflections on who she is do for her, which is something I can really resonate to. Um, and it's a, it, it, for me, it was not only wonderful to see somebody in the family writing something um, of this quality and this depth and with this earnestness, but also it was a wonderful way into Ashley because she and her sisters were raised in Dallas and I've while I've been around the world, um, in, lived in different cities and so on, I've never lived in Texas. So my contact physically with um, these girls and the other nieces and nephews who uh, live in Dallas has been um, fleeting at best. In fact, one of my biggest memories of Ashley and Megan were when they were little girls um, visiting Puerto Rico and my husband and I lived in Puerto Rico. So it was wonderful to have a, a way into who she is as a human being. And I get all choked up when I think about both of these blogs. Uh, her sister, um, and Ashley is very interested in writing and music. She has a beautiful voice. Um, and so she's going off in, in the arts kind of um, direction. Her sister, Megan Alvarado, who's a little bit younger, going off to college, this, this um, uh, coming fall is a quite a bit different. She's her it's a, it's still a very eloquent blog and it's very earnest and very authentic. But Ashley uh, Megan wants to be a doctor and Megan has um, a thyroid condition and it's something that she's only in the last years or so gotten diagnosed with. And because of her interest in medicine and science, she's she's incorporating not only her personal journey with her challenges and um, what she wants to be in life and all that, but she's incorporating this with, you know, she's incorporating this with um, uh, information about the disease, about the underlying conditions, and about different kinds of physical things that are challenges for people. So, in a sense, it, it's it's um, it's kind of like watching the doctors on television. It's it's both informative and it's personal. And it's a it's a wonderful reflection on what it feels like to do um, to have her challenge in life, and also how she's using this um, to tell people um, um, who might also have this challenge as well what it's about and how it works. And uh, one of the things that I find interesting about her blog is that it's very much like um, someone yesterday was talking about how younger people. Uh, in their classroom tend to put together one of these public facing um, diary kinds of statements um, and that is it's very multimedia it's got lots of little videos and animated gifs and photographs and kind of a um, uh, not a scattershot um, I wouldn't say scattershot but it's it, it's punctuated if you know what I mean the prose is punctuated it's got 
it's got these wonderful sort of um, um, nuggets of information and understanding and and um, reflection, and they kind of move forward in a in a um, in kind of a pattern rather than being one piece of 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 prose that flows like a symphony that flows like a song. Megan's is a little bit more like a a, a rap in um, um, in that it's it's uh, it's lively and it has this kind of beat to it. It's really wonderful. So for me, not only have I learned about how you put together um, a blog and what people of this age are thinking and how they approach life, but I'm also getting to see these human beings who are, as you can tell, <laughs> I get choked up, um, these just these lovely human beings and how they're they're crafting their lives and so on. So blogging can be something that's very personal in terms of fleshing out and uh, deepening the relationships you already have as well as um, bringing you into the uh, um, purview into the into the orbit of people who you have something in common with but didn't know until you got there that that was going to be true. So another thing that I've noticed as I've gone through things is that blogging is a wonderful way to get to know your colleagues and to allow your colleagues to, um, oh Melanie that's a wonderful, I love that. The first one was quieter and like a lake, and this one has lively vibrancy and is like an ocean with waves. That's marvelous. I really like that characterization. Thanks, Melanie. So I've also used blogging my blogs and the blogs of other colleagues to get to know the colleagues and understand um, what they what they're interested in and what they're doing, and also learn from them. So these are six blogs that I follow. What the passionate about learning, of course, is Nellie's, and I tend to um, be a great consumer of everything that Nellie does because Nellie's been a very important mentor and teacher and friend for me. Crystal Brody, who a lot of you know, um, does uh, a number of blogs, and um, Brody Yesel is a uh, Brody ESL is is a uh, a wonderful kind of brief, here's something I found out, let's go and see it and see if it works for you kind of a blog and I, I really enjoy that one. Down on the uh, the second row we have Scott Merrick and Andrew Will Will Andy Willock. Both Scott Merrick and Andrew, Andy are, Scott and Andy are very involved with um, the Virginia Society for uh, uh, tech and Ed, mainly the International Society for Technology and Education and also uh, Virtual Pioneers and some of these other things that occur in Second Life and they're both very adept at using virtual worlds not only for professional de development for teachers but also for teaching. Andy has done some really wonderful things in um, uh, uh, and will be in our, our SL MOOC that's coming up in April. He's done some wonderful things in Second Life. So I met these guys as avatars in groups of teachers in Second Life and have used their blogs essentially to understand their philosophy of teaching and the kinds of things they're doing in their classrooms and getting to know more about who they are as teachers. And these kinds of, of um, relationships that you have with the blogs that you read are very informative of your own teaching style, your understanding of, of your level of teaching. Um, one of the things I used to say, I ran a, a very small graduate school for a little while, online graduate school, and I had a little bit of difficulty getting across to my faculty that just because you're a university teacher doesn't mean that you're not a teacher and it um, also doesn't mean that you don't have an enormous that you do not have an enormous amount to learn from other teachers at other levels with other interests and points of view because you do. And I think I've learned an enormous amount about how to handle an online classroom, what in, how to get people engaged with the material, how to recreate uh, or create a te uh, um, materials for the students that will be engaging and even when the students are adults of my age. And I've learned some of those skills from listening to and talking to and reading the blogs of teachers in uh, uh, elementary schools and middle schools and high schools, uh, trainers, entrepreneurs, and so on. So 
being a professor is not being somebody apart in my mind. It's being a teacher, and being a teacher is a is is a fundamental um, act. And you can, by listening to other people and how they do their work, you can find a way to infuse your own teaching with more creativity and make it more authentic for the learners that you're uh, involved with. And the other two at the right-hand side are from the, the small area of psychology that I deal with as a researcher. Um, I was drawn to community colleges at, be, at the beginning, Melanie. Um, when I was uh, took my master's degree, that was where I was headed. Um, and then the bottom fell out of the teaching market, and I ended up in research. Um, that was way back in uh, the 70s. Um, so these last two blogs, Unbelievable is an author blog. Stacy Horn is an author in New York City who wrote a very interesting blog about um, a labor the Duke Parapsychology Laboratory that was in operation from 19... 30, uh, 1930, 35 through ni the middle 1960s um, and went through all the archives and wrote this great book about the kinds of research that they did there. And one of the things that's wonderful about this blog is not only that she, not only that she was able to put out um, uh, materials that she found in the archives in a blog which helped sell the book but also gave people interested in the topic much more information but she put her own heart and her reactions to the material she was found finding into this blog as well so it was a wonderful way to get to know Stacy as well as um, to find out more information about the research that she did that was not um, she couldn't put into the book because of length and so on and uh, down below is a friend of mine for 30 years who is very interested in reincarnation research and while we've talked about um, uh, reincarnation from a variety of points of view over the years this blog was probably the first time um, that I really understood his philosophy and his own interests so Getting to know your colleagues is a very big part of blogging, of reading blogs and being a consumer of blogs and allowing your colleagues to get to know you is also a very important part of your own blogging, I think. Excuse me. <laughs> it's spring and I have an allergy. Now, these things are all YouTube vloggers. And uh, one, of course, is Nellie, and um, I, she's the uh, first one on the top row to the left. And uh, this, the one in the middle is Ludmilla Smirnova, who's also um, one of my mentors. Both Nellie and Mila have been very important in teaching me how to teach online. And I, I, I spend it, I guess I'm more of a visual, I always thought of myself as a very verbal person, but, I, but I'm also a very visual person. And I have found... Um, getting into and being open to all the various varieties of, of vlogging, video blogging, that are available on sites like YouTube. And now I'm just beginning to explore Vine that uh, Shelly was talking about in uh, um, her, her talk yesterday. These, these, are, these are a marvelous way to um, uh, get to know uh, individuals who are talking about their own lives or are making tutorials or doing educational activities. Um, the one on the top, uh, uh, the third one, the one to the right on the top, this guy here, this is Vlog Brothers. Now, Vlog Brothers started out when YouTube started out, which is only about five years ago. And essentially, it's two brothers who um, are very bright guys and lived in live in different uh, states in the United States and they started out making this one camera very kind of stiff uh, once a week vlog to each uh, vlog to each other so they would each know what the other one was doing and because of the things that they were interested in they began to gather quite a following John Green is a, an award-winning um, young adult fiction writer and also runs Crash Course which is a, a really wonderful kind of graphics rich educational site that teaches um, chemistry and physics right now his brother Hank Green is doing a psychology course and uh, John is doing a liter literature course they have now many many thousands and thousands upon followers and many many other 
um, channels, one of which is the one on the second down here, uh, second row to the left, Psy Show, which is Hank's show, um, the other brother. So it's John Green and, and Hank Green. And they're both in their 30s someplace. Um, young, young, young married men, essentially. Their, their interest in doing education on, on line in the YouTube context has turned into actually businesses that keep both of them, um, both of them in uh, salary as well as allowing them to employ a number of people. And the, the, they're, they've put together this lovely community that they call Nerd Fighteria, which is basically young people who are interested in um, the nerd fighters who are who are interested in science fiction and science and mathematics and education and educating themselves and being uh, good citizens in the world and as the Green Brothers say, reducing world suck, which is a which is a kind of an ugly American English turn term for making the world a better place. So getting rid of the the yucky parts, the not so good parts of our, our global communities and making everything better. And they've been at this for quite a while, so it's morphed into a variety of, of, of really wonderful projects, like the Project for Awesome that they do in February, January every year. This year they raised over $750,000 for various charities. So these guys have been mentors of mine, even though I don't know them and they don't know me. Not only as I watched some of their older videos and saw that they were doing basically what what uh, many educators did at the very beginning, one face, one webcam, and a message. Um, and then this morphed into something quite a bit bigger. And John, John Green's, uh, well, both John and Hank's Crash Course, it's called Crash Course, um, uh, uh, um, c courses, classes on physics and so on are used to help, uh, are used in uh, advanced placement classrooms in high schools here in the U.S. So it's, it's kind of gotten wider as they've gone along. But the thing that's really wonderful about these two guys is the authenticness of who they are and how they started and what they can tell you as a consumer, as somebody who watches what they're doing about where the world is going in terms of connecting and, and um, um, teaching online and that anybody with an interest, a, a passion, can become a teacher in a video model or in a verbal model. This other one down here um, is Hannah Hart. Now, Hannah Hart um, is a young woman. She's 27 now. She started blo video blogging three years ago. She um, started out uh, doing a, a, a kind of a funny uh, cooking show, which is how I found her, because YouTube has turned into my my school, my my uh, um, my my entertainment, and my recipe book. Because um, you can find skill tutorials on absolutely everything that you need on YouTube, and she started out doing this very funny uh, kitchen show, um, in which she got a little bit tipsy drinking wine while she was making a recipe and sometimes the recipe didn't turn out so well and other times it did but she was just charming and there was something very authentic about her. She has evolved over the years even though it's not been many years it's become um, her main source of income. She's got several shows now. She does uh, this this particular website Your Harto. She has My Harto and Your Harto and some other stuff. In Your Harto she's doing a walking book club so essentially they pick a book and she and her follow followers will read the book and she does the vlogs about the books while she's walking and the idea is you pick an audio book, you listen to it while you're walking and then you come back to the community on YouTube and you comment each other and it becomes a big discussion. So this is another kind of a grassroots way of doing things. And she's hooked up with some other young women on YouTube um, who uh, have artistic skills and acting skills and they've actually made their own movie which is quite good called Camp Dakota that you can download off of iTunes. So so this is another person who started out just one woman in a camera bringing her pers her, her interest in cooking and then just being funny um, uh, to to a YouTube show and then eventually it became 
it branched out into something that was very personal on a lot of different levels. She developed a big community of people who were like her, who also were inspired to start doing their own blogs. She was in her video blogs and she was inspired by other people. Yeah, vlogging while jogging. That's what Hannah does. So, and every time I watched her at the beginning, I would think, oh my goodness, what I could have done with YouTube when I was 27. So, so this is a great, I think of her, even though I don't know her, I don't think I've ever even made a comment on one of her videos where I have, where I have done on John and Hanks occasionally. Um, I think of her as a mentor because I see her changing in the way that she does things. I see how she structures what she's doing. Um, and then I've gone out and sampled a lot of other people and how they do these things, especially in the last six months or so, I've gone out and watched probably all you guys that have English as a second language videos and teaching shows, and I've started to do that with Spanish as a second language because I'm learning Spanish. And it's, it's very instructive. You can look at these things and take away not only structural notions about what a video blog should be, and how to set up a YouTube channel and how to get your information across. But it also gives you that same kind of connection to another human being who's authentically presenting their passion. And that's really important. And the final one is just my favorite um, uh, cooking lady. She has the Bread Kitchen, um, Teetley's Crazy Kitchen, which is, which is foods from different um, ethnic varieties of all kinds of stuff, including British food. And then she has one on her garden. But um, she's the lady who, who reminded me that I love to bake. So, th And that's a person that I comment on fairly frequently and gotten an email from and so feel um, that she's a mentor in a different part of my life. So these kinds of things connect us to each other and they connect us over age boundaries and over cultural boundaries and over national boundaries. We discover that we're all the same. No matter what our governments are doing or how bright or not bright they might be, no matter what's happening in our societies, as human beings, we have the same needs and the same um, the same goals and the same urge to creativity and urge towards sharing. And that's what these kinds of things have, have brought together. And we can all learn to learn together. Poonam, I'm going to talk about that right at the end. Um, so uh, you'll have your answer in a second. So at then as an aside, as you're doing these kinds of things, you want to learn the ropes. And obviously, that's an American expression for getting to know the, 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 um, the procedures or the protocols or the way in which you sh other people are doing the thing that you want to do. And one of the ways that I've done this is to um, look around for people talking about how to do exactly, exactly, Melanie, exactly, nuggets of joy. Um, one of the things that I've done is to try and and find out how to do video blogging uh, more effectively. I, I I resonate to that, Tom, because um, I've discovered, you know, it took me a while. I've been listening to YouTube and watching YouTube for ages and watching the English as a second language teachers, and I've been. Uh, uh, English and I've been learning Spanish for many years. My husband's from Puerto Rico and um, it didn't occur to me until recently that I should be looking for the teachers of Spanish as a second language and watching these shows and now I'm subscribed to, I'm subscribed to about 30, you know, 240 or 50 YouTube channels. I ha even have a tutorial on how to use your YouTube channel as an organizational tool to keep and and um, uh, kind of organize the various things that you're interested in. But uh, I now I'm I'm watching these things and I'm subscribing to cooking shows in Spanish and news broadcasting in Spanish and um, uh, individual bloggers and video bloggers in Spanish and so on. And it's really really helpful. Um, I seem to be doing the opposite at the moment. <laughs> Nelly, I'm learning more online, although right now I'm writing a chapter for a book and, and uh, my head is in, in print as well. So to learn the ropes, you're not only watching people and seeing what it is that they're doing and thinking about, is that style of blogging going to work for me? Um, yes, I think it's absolutely possible to learn a language via YouTube. Um, not only are there uh, many of our colleagues that we've met in WizIQ um, have 
fantastic channels like Vicki Howlett and so many other people have really uh, Drew Badger and so on. So many people have and and Jason for heaven's sakes and Kala Learn. There are so many great um, ways to get exposure to English language and the various things that are um, that you need to kind of become fluent and confident and so on. And I think that's true of of any language that's out there. And also, basically, anything. When I was first interested in learning about blogging, I put that into the YouTube search bar, um, how to blog, and found people all over the place, um, um, all over the place for uh, uh, who were giving advice about why to blog, how to blog how to set up a blog, which are the best things to go and take a look at and so on. Well, another thing that's interesting about YouTube, Polina, I'm getting off the topic, but that's okay, um, is that uh, one of the things that you find on YouTube all the time, which is very interesting, are all these people all over the world, and mainly young people, who do a video blog only about the books on the shelf in their apartment. So they're their personal library and it may be five minutes maybe 10 minutes maybe 35 minutes when the person is and the person who's doing the video blog has their camera set up and they're pulling books off their shelves and they're saying this is a book that I like because it's a wonderful piece of fiction about people who are of Chinese descent or it's a great um, book about this or that or whatever and it's it's a very interesting thing and it's kind of a you know, an awful lot of video bloggers, especially the young ones, will take time out of their or out of their regular broadcasts to show you all of the things that they're reading and tell you why they have um, they treasure that particular book so much. And that's fascinating um, as a phenomenon. Anyway, another way is to go and look for conventions that talk about how to do things or what's been done and VidCon is a, a video convention that was put together um, by the Green Brothers originally Hank and John Green and uh, Hank is right here he's the SciShow guy and there's John Green and then this guy does uh, video blogs for I think National Geographic this guy is Minic Physics and this woman um, does video blogs about mathematics this was a this was a uh, panel at the latest VidCon. Well, actually, at VidCon 2012, so a couple years back, and it has six parts. It was an hour and a half panel discussion about creating video blogs. And one of the things that I thought was the greatest piece of of advice was just set that camera up and talk to the camera. When you start out, it's a process. It's like writing your first blog. You set up maybe the first blog that you write on, on the internet is going to be a very uh, simple framework. Um, you're just going to write a couple of paragraphs. The first podcast you do is very very um, uh, off the cuff maybe and the first video you do is going to be a kind of a talking head looking into that web camera and saying something earnest but as you go along like anything else if you're doing a podcast you start to worry about sound and structure and how people are listening where they might be listening as you're doing a blog you start thinking about how the blog should look um, is it engaging? Do you want to have extra things? Like, for instance, my niece Ashley uh, links to her, her book reviews on the side of her blog. Um, you might want to add extra information. You want, might want to put something animated in there. And you get a little bit more proficient at how you want to do what you're doing. You may start uh, blogging for a purpose, uh, for your classes, or for working through something that, that you um, are learning for yourself, etc. And with video blogging, it's the same. You start out as a head with a webcam, and eventually you start worrying about how good your sound system is, whether or not you've got a good, a good um, webcam. You worry about whether or not you should you should um, do some animation in the front or the back. Do you want to use some of the tools from YouTube? You start looking at the YouTube tools. You get to know the movie editors and that kind of thing. So I started out essentially recording things that I did on um, WizIQ and just plopping them up there and doing tutorials with Screencast-O-Matic. Um, 
uh, Second Life tutorials, Moodle tutorials, and using other kinds of technology. And then I started not too long ago um, a series of short educational videos on my subspecialty in psychology that I call Primer. And it's educational research resources for people with similar interests to mine. Um, and I uh, have done about, I've done 13, I think 13 episodes so far of Primer. And initially Primer was just like my tu tutorials, a um, screencast-o-matic kind of a thing. You know, here's me talking over a website I think you all should go and re watch or uh, read or whatever. And now I have slides at the beginning and I have information at the end. So it's all a process. And I think that's probably the best advice. Just jump in and do it. And as you do it, you'll evolve in terms of how well you do it and what you're doing it for. And then um, another way to get to know or get to know the roads I th ropes I think is is the Wiz IQ blog. It's absolutely spectacular. The group of bloggers are varied. Um, there are people blogging blogging about homeschooling, about teaching English English as a second language, about online teaching skills, about starting a business. So this is one of these these. Um, resources that can give you enormous numbers of ideas about how to do the things that you want to do. Um, and so this is also something that I use. And I get to know my colleagues as well who are around the WizIQ um, universe and what it is that motivates them and what, what their experiences have been like. So then the other point I wanted to make, and, and um, this kind of came up in the previous session uh, that Shelley was managing, is that a lot of what you do online is 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 basically blogging. You're sharing, you're sharing um, in a full blown way with a with a blog that has lots of paragraphs and lots of stuff to read. You're sharing on Facebook in short bursts or in longer bursts if you use the note system. You're sharing on Tumblr. You're sharing on StumbleUpon. You're sharing on Digo and Delicious. You're also sharing if you use some of these things like Screencast-O-Matic or present.me when you post something to their live stream for free, you're sharing your interests and not only your skills in carrying out what you're what you're doing, but also the things that you're um, you're interested in and what your take is. And even Edshell, for instance, which is something that I just got on not too long ago because of a, a lecture in Moodle MOOC 3, um, you're sharing reviews about um, uh, technology that you like. And there are different levels of conversations in LinkedIn groups and in your statuses and in your back and forth with people that you know and love on the various social sites and in your, um, for instance, I'm on academia.edu which has about six million um, academics worldwide and, uh, and there are short, people post short statuses, people publish their um, you know, put up uh, 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 copies of their publications, and it's all a conversation. And one of the best things that you can do when you when you're thinking about this is think about this as all the things you do when you walk through the world. You're having different types of conversations, and you're presenting yourself in different ways to different groups. That's what you're doing online as well. And if you want, and if you're if you tie it all together and you think about it as all of one piece. These are all ways in which I can share. These are all ways in which I can um, teach. These are all ways in which I can get my point across and I can find out, with a, find out what other people are thinking, get to know other people, make new friends, and so on. Then you see these as a piece, all of a one piece rather than they're like different ways of doing, uh, different ways of, 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 of um, feeding that need to be a social member of, of the global community. And then finally, and probably most importantly, doing your own blog is, is a way that you connect to yourself. And I've got Ashley and Megan's um, uh, blog sitting here because I think I do similarly thing, I do similar things with what I write to what they're doing. For instance, thinking about learning, I don't blog all the time. Um, I'm, I'm an occasional blogger. I'm on a lot of other social media more frequently and I do more video um, uploads uh, than I do textual. Um, uploads, 
but in thinking about learning I'm talking about my own journey as an online teacher and what I feel about teaching and getting back to my roots as a teacher and and then blog in Polish <laughs> you know, or, or whatever your language is um, um, I'm thinking about my own journey and I'm trying to work through how I feel about it and that exactly my both of my blogs are um, a reflection of my own autobiography essentially and they're also a way that I can go back and say okay well I I thought that and I knew that and and now I now I need to go in a different direction and I started English for academics because I'm trying to retrain myself to provide a, a course for academics um, who would like to present or publish in English and are not native speakers so that's a kind of a um, a reflection space for my journey learning about uh, teaching English language uh, English as a second language from all of you folks and then when I blog on WizIQ even though um, Neveling Carr who's um, kind of my handler uh, will give me topics to blog on every time I blog for WizIQ um, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to 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 learn something new that's going to help me too. So these are so you know, like Ashley, I'm trying to craft something that has a flow to it that's more like a a, a piece of a, a, you know an old timey piece of music that's got this kind of flow in it, the way you would write in your own diary. And like, but like Megan, I'm I'm learning um, and bringing my learning to the fore, and then sharing my learning with the people that read my blog. So, for me, I've, I haven't quite stopped writing on paper, but this has taken the place to some extent um, as a more focused way of, of getting into certain aspects of, of my own learning and getting it out there and sharing it. Because basically, as Nellie always says, caring is sharing. We, we learn so much from each other. Um, and we we learn so much about ourselves when we try to explain um, something that we know or that we're thinking or we try to ask questions and get responses and see whether or not we're on the right track and that kind of thing so connecting to yourself I think is a very very important part of whatever type of, of, of blogging you might be doing micro blogging or video blogging or whatever so this is from Sylvia's talk yesterday. She said, and I loved the slide that she did. She said, blogging is a great way to speak to potential. And I think that's absolutely true. It's not only speaking to potential in your students, but potentials in, your, in yourself, um, potentials in your community, in your profession, potentials for all of us as, as, as um, citizens of this round ball that we all live on. It's it's a way to kind of engage with the future, not only your personal future but your professional future. So I just uh, edited it slightly and to say that blogging, video video logging, so vlogging, micro blogging, updating your status on social media, posting photos, all of those things are a great way to speak to potential. And as we've seen in some in Shelley's talk yesterday. Uh, with her colleague about how they use blogging with their students. This is so true. Their kids are really interested in the idea of being able to contribute to what's out there and and that's a wonderful way to actualize that potential that, that uh, their teachers and parents and influencers and mentors and so on are hoping to speak to with their their online contributions. So this screen I'm just showing to you, um, um, these are all of the links for all of the things that I have talked about, um, including the link to the education panel at VidCon, which I really recommend if you're interested in doing video blogging. It's a very interesting discussion about how to do it and who it impacts upon and um, whether or not you have to be, uh, you can be like Nelly and I just getting it up there. Um, in a, whatever shape it's in, um, or if you have to get into this kind of graphics mode, um, and they tend to vote for the other the other stuff. And just everything that that I've mentioned uh, is here, including uh, these three. Uh, this is the WizIQ blog on which I'm a sometime participant, and these are my two personal blogs. So let me go to the very last slide, and I just wanted to say this is my email. If you'd like to get in touch with me, I'm. Um, 
Also in Second Life, if you want to IM me in there, we're going to be doing a Second Life MOOC uh, in April. And that's my avatar name, Maggie Laramore. Um, and on SlideShare, actually, I have got, um, that's called Alvarado Consulting. That's my um, um, uh, handle there on SlideShare. And I put up some of my slides, some of my PowerPoint presentations up on SlideShare. Everything else, it's either Nan's and Groney or Nancy's and Groney or whatever. So I would love to hear from you guys. And I'm going to be seeing you around the rest of the, the festival for sure. And we've got about a little bit less than 10 minutes so we can make the transition. If you have any questions you want to put into the chat, and thank you very much for all your kind comments. Um, and yeah, definitely come and, and comment on the on the uh, course feed page for the course. Um, so it's been nice to share this with you this morning. Oh, thanks, Bellany. I love your turn of phrase. If you have a blog, I would love to hear about it. Such a beautiful thing. I, I gave the uh, link to this to my nieces, and, and hopefully um, um, they will enjoy this. They, I, I was rereading their blogs last night and um, really loved getting to know them again. So, Thank you. I just love more. listening to you. Um, it is so inspirational and so... I don't know, it just puts me in a very, very, you know, it's like the alpha uh, mode where you can really learn. I don't know if you realize this, but it's it's an attention getter. And I can remember everything you said because of your voice and the way you say it. And, and I think that it comes from the heart. And that's where um, we make a difference with uh, authenticity and being real. I mean... You know, we it's not always easy, yeah. but it's really worthwhile to be ourselves. Yeah, I agree. I agree so much. Um, I one of my one of my colleagues who signed up for the Second Life MOOC in April, she she said to me once, "Well, I could just listen to you all day long." And the and what's interesting is there are a lot of people like I can listen to you, Nelly, all day long. <laughs> um, and I love listening to Sylvia. I love hearing Jackson because my grandma had that accent. Um, it, it's just, it, but there was a study recently, and I'm ashamed to say I can't remember who published it, that said that we remember something like 95% of what we hear and see in a video context, and compared to what we, what we take away from a book that we may not be very interested in, um, from the beginning. If we're passionate about a book, we remember every detail, but if it's something that we're, we're learning or reading because we think we should, um, we don't get quite as much out of it. So. Because it's not yeah, real. Honey. Again, it's not real. Um, yeah. Um, well, That's true. I, we'd like to continue this, um, Nancy, if it's um, possible. There's the, the link. Well, you know it anyways, but Tom has added it. Yeah. Apparently, in the other session, in the authoring session, they were asking for the link, Tom, and that's why I knew it was there was a problem. So I checked it out, and um, yes, so now that's correct. The link that Tom has added, um, oh, does it? So you really have to watch out. Well, you know, it's not about blaming Tom. I'm not blaming you, I'm sure. I'm sure it's all technology. <laughs> um, I just love listening and chatting. You know, I just love the whole process. If we could turn this into a blog, you know, a, a, a yeah. weekly blog, you know, instead of calling it a live session or presentation, call it a, you know, a blog. And then we can kind of share what's in the chat and then what you've said and just, you know, maybe that's an idea. Make it a bit different, you know, with the screenshots and, and get the um, uh, the audio and the video. And, and what do you think, Nancy? I think it's a great idea. I really do. I think there's the the other day I a friend of mine was saying, "Oh, we should interview somebody." And I <laughs> thought, "Yeah, we could do that in Wiz IQ and pop those, you know, pop our little faces out in the middle and have the interview going on and record it and all that." It's just such a wonderful classroom frame. I agree. So, I agree. And now we get to 
an MP4, so we don't even have to re-record if we don't wait, want. Can't wait, can't wait because I'm on Camtasia, yeah. which means that I have to go. I have to go into the next class. I have to find out the co-presenter, so I don't use somebody's name because people got annoyed <laughs> at me. People got annoyed. So, um, all right. So, um, see you next. Well, thank you, Crystal. Uh, Crystal is next, everybody, and um, Crystal yeah. is amazing. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Join us and spread the word. Thank See you, you there. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Next. Thanks, <laughs> Bye, everybody.